fired Mitt Romney, his boss, and is now the author of what the New York Times says could be one of the most hated books this year. Unattended Consequences, Why Everything You've Been Told About the Economy is Wrong. Ed, uh, certainly uh, with an interesting review that you got from, <laughs> from the New York Times. But, but, but I want to be a little bit more, more uh, uh, get into some more details in here. Because sure. uh, after the J.P. Morgan you know, debacle, this trading debacle, yes. you know, multi-billion dollars in losses, you couldn't blame any American for saying, look, this feels like 2008 all over again. Big banks taking huge risks and the American taxpayers on the hook. Are they wrong for saying that? Well, I think so. I think what happened to J.P. Morgan has very little to do with the financial crisis. And so we had a 30 percent drop in real estate prices, which threatened all banks with close to a trillion dollars of losses, which turned out to be some smaller. I think the uh, Federal Crisis Inquiry Commission estimates them at 300 billion dollars. But nevertheless, institutional depositors withdrew their money, 1.5 trillion dollars at the peak. Mm -hmm. And that really caused our entire banking system to to collapse because as we all know from the citizens of Bedford Falls and it's a wonderful life the banks have lent all the money out into businesses and homes and things like that so when depositors rush to the bank to withdraw their money it's but, but not this there. is even but what they're saying is that this is even worse now because the banks aren't lending all of their money out to the economy we're only growing at two to three percent at the same time banks like JP Morgan are still taking these huge risks and these risks which if they get multiplied by even more banks could risk the financial system again. Well, there's there's two kinds of risk. Okay, there's uh, loan losses or default risk is what uh, J.P. Morgan is suffering, two billion dollars, and we have to hold banks 100 percent responsible for those risks because if we don't, they'll make unproductive loans, and it, that will not help our economy grow. But banks are also exposed to a second risk, which is often conflated with the first, and that is they're 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 uh, at risk of withdrawals. If we hold banks responsible for withdrawals, then they have to leave money sitting in the vault to fund the withdrawals if they occur. And if they leave it in the vault, then it's then not financing not your it home, okay. it's not financing your business. And if, you, and if you drive them to lend it out, then they have to push that risk onto the borrowers, and the borrowers won't borrow the money. So that slows our whole economy down in the short run. Mm -hmm. And we saw this movie twice before. We saw it in the 1930s, and we saw it in the 1990s in Japan. In both cases, 10 years of lousy growth and high unemployment. You have to get that money to recycle. Now, this is not the argument, though, which is that that is the basis for why the New York Times is calling this could be one of the most hated books in, in America. <laughs> yes. What they're saying is that the, the basis of this book and what you know others have said as well is that what you're saying is incentivize the rich, incentivize those who make money so that they can help the 99% opposed to what has been the movement so far in America, which is this sort of idea of soak the rich, right? Yes. Raise taxes on them. And, uh, you know, and, and therefore that would make a more balanced economy. But you say the opposite. Well, the book makes an argument that the economy today is very different than the economy in the 1950s. And so I think if you don't see any changes from then to today, you kind of scratch your head and why, wonder why income inequality is growing. But in the 50s, we're, we're really capitalizing on the value of mass markets for manufactured goods, like cars, for example. You have to build a big manufacturing industry, a worldwide oil industry, pave a million miles of roads, put 250 million cars. That's the era of big business, big investment, huge economies of scale. Individuals don't matter much in an economy like that. Today, 13 people can create Instagram and a billion dollars of value in two years. Google, Facebook, Intel, Microsoft. It's, it's innovation that's growing into large com companies and growing very fast. But I don't think anybody's criticizing that, though, that type of innovation. Well, I don't think people are criticizing that, but you have to ask what's causing income inequality today. So if you get another Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg, is that really hurting the middle class? I think if you can make a comparison to Europe and Japan, what we see is that our risk takers, as evidenced by the payoffs for the successful rich takers, which are the 1%, if you will, are much more productive than Europe's and Japan's with no cost, at worst, to our middle class. Right, I mean, you can make a case that our middle class is actually better You could off. almost narrow down the argument against the 1%, which, I mean, and you point out very clear examples of those who have been, who are, you know, have been or are in the 1%, Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg. But really what they're talking about are the Lloyd Blank fines, right, who they feel are heads of banks who basically have operations that only generate wealth for the wealthy. They do nothing in their argument for the actual economy. Yes, well, I think you can think of Lloyd Blankfeld as perhaps two things, the CEO, number one, and maybe a, a, a banker, number two. Let's talk about CEOs for a second. We can loop back to bankers, which I think is more complicated. Don't forget, you know, J.P. Morgan is not run by one CEO. It's run by 50. 
potential CEOs. And you have to pay those guys comparable to their alternative opportunities. And if you don't do that, you're going to have a hard time staffing the bank with people that really can compete in our economy. If you're in Europe and Japan, their employees face pretty dismal prospects for mm -hmm. their careers compared to people here in the United States, talented people who face extraordinarily rich opportunities. And if you don't compete pay-wise, with you those say you got to pay them more in order to take the risks, in order to make the money, in order to put that back in the account. And manage the risks and such, yes. Okay, and hang on, I want to bring you back. We'll talk more about that in a moment. We'll be back with former managing director at Bain Capital, Ed Conard, uh, in a moment.